welcome to our discussion on weak acid and base calculations. So far with acids and bases, the calculations we've been performing have been uh, based kind of rooted only in strong acids and strong bases. Um, but we also have to consider the possibility of calculating with weak acids and weak bases. So first and foremost, um, weak acids don't dissociate completely. They don't fall into ions as easily. Um, when you put a weak acid in the water, you can expect most of it to stay in its, in its um, molecular form, um, which means that they don't put a lot of hydrogen ions in solution. It means that they aren't necessarily as um, hearty as a strong acid. However, we can still use a, uh, a concentrated weak acid and do plenty of damage. So um, don't think it means they're not uh, capable of doing damage. It just means that they don't ionize completely. We're going to use equilibrium constants to describe the degree to which a weak acid or base will dissociate. And for acids, we'll call it Ka. For bases, we'll call it Kb. Um, this is uh, the degree which acids or bases ionize. Um, strong acids and bases don't have a Ka value. Okay, or Actually, typically, we'll say they have a Ka greater than 1, which makes them strong, which means we don't use it. Um, Generally, the way we write the dissociation is we write the intact acid, where A means anion. So you'll only see that in examples or maybe test questions with hypotheticals. Um, but hydrogen ion attached to an anion. And then you'll notice a double-headed arrow here means that um, we'll learn in the future in chemistry that this is actually an equilibrium that exists between some of it will remain in acid form, some will break into ions. But again, the A means anion. So we can then write the Ka expression where we can calculate that value, Ka, by multiplying the concentration of hydrogen ions times the concentration of anions, which is typically a one-to-one -one ratio in an acid where you have one hydrogen ion per anion, and divide by the concentration of the intact acid. So if we take that and put it in a real-life example like um, hydrocyanic acid, HCN forms hydrogen ions and cyanide ions, and here's the Ka expression. Um, when you, we think about strong acids, um, if we don't have any of this, we're going to or, or a very, 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 very low amount of this. Our Ka is going to be gigantic, okay, and that's going to mess everything up. Um, you know, if, if this is a zero number, well, then you're going to undefine the Ka, so um, that's not going to help us much. So we're talking about weak acids, weak bases now. Um, there are some conditions we need to explain. Um, diprotic, tripotic uh, acids and dibasic, tribasic bases. Um, you know, if you have to understand that there's a Ka value for each hydrogen as it would fall off of a molecule. For example, here's carbonic acid. There's a Ka value or rate at which the first hydrogen comes off this molecule, leaving behind uh, hydrogen carbonate ion. And then there's a second Ka value for the hydrogen carbonate ion losing its hydrogen and becoming carbonate. Same is true for something like phosphoric acid, another weak acid. Uh, its first ionization, it's going to form H2PO4 minus, which is dihydrogen phosphate. Second ionization, form hydrogen phosphate. And then a third ionization, form just the phosphate ion. Now, if this should be minus 2, this should be minus 3. Um, but as you see those subsequent hydrogens come off, they don't come off at the same degree. Um, it requires more and more aggressive conditions in order to get those hydrogen ions to be liberated off that molecule. Um, and you know this stems into biology even. Phosphate is a very powerful energy carrier because of its ability to accept a hydrogen, um, accept multiple hydrogens. So it, it acts in, uh, in ways in, in body chemistry to uh, either release or absorb energy in systems. Adenine triphosphate, ATP, you might recall. So, um, all that said, uh, the equilibrium constants when there's multiple hydrogens, the donator hydroxides to put into solution, there's a Ka for each one. We won't do any calculations across a molecule that contains more than one, just know that they have different Ka values for each subsequent hydrogen liberation or hydroxide production. KB values, like we said before, um, we have to understand that when you put uh, a base, a weak base into water, some of it will form hydroxide, some will stay intact. 
um, in the form of that original base. Um, and then our weak, ba our weak base expression becomes our hydroxide that gets produced, and then our conjugate uh, acid, in this case ammonium ion, divided by that intact base. Just like Ka, the larger the Kb value, the stronger the base. So the math, how do we do the math? First and foremost, just like everything else in acid base, you must start with a balanced chemical reaction. Normally, when we're dealing with weak acids and bases, this can be monoprotic, uh, one hydrogen to give. So we'll keep it that way for you. Um, we're going to set up a reaction diagram called a Rice diagram. It sounds like a big, weird concept. It's actually just a nice orderly way to set up a thought. Then we'll write our Ka or Kb expression. And once we've done that, we will substitute the known values at equilibrium, which is what we're looking for, into our Ka or Kb expression. And then we'll solve for Ka or Kb if that's what we're asked to do, or maybe we'll solve it for hydrogen ion concentration if that's what we need to do. Um, and we can calculate any number of things from there. So this is an example rice diagram with our acid intact and then our ions forming. Initial concentrations, the change we expect, and equilibrium. Let's look at an actual example. So calculate the pH of a 0.1 molar solution of acetic acid. Um, Ms. Horn's class titrated with acetic acid, so you already worked with a weak acid. But um, understand that just because you have a 0.1 molar solution doesn't mean that all that 0.1 molar is going to form hydrogen ions. That's where Ka comes in. Okay, so you could say, well, negative log of this gives me pH. No, it doesn't, because not all this forms hydrogen ions. This value tells us the degree to which we form hydrogen ions. So let's embrace the process, see what we find. First, there's our balanced reaction. Here's acetic acid. We assume it went into water to form hydrogen ions and acetic, acid ion, acetic acetate ions. And if you look at acetate, you can say, hey, that's my conjugate base. So my acid my hydrogen ion and my conjugate base. Um, our K expression is thus <coughs> hydrogen ion concentration times acetic acetate concentration over acetic acid concentration. And then our rice diagram. The rice diagram in this case I've filled out for you, okay, but I'm going to write it as I talk about it just so you can see it happen. First of all, we write our reaction that's done here. Then we write our initial conditions. What happens? What am I, what am I starting with? And in this case, we had a 0.1 molar solution of acetic acid. Well, here it is. Okay. And when you first start with that acid system, you have to imagine it having not been put into water. Okay. So you have zero hydrogen ions, zero conjugate base. The change we expect once it's put with water and allowed to, to ionize is going to be we're going to lose some quantity of this 0.1 molar acid as ions. And that same exact quantity we're going to add is hydrogen ions and acetate. So for every acetic acid we tear apart, we get one of these and one of these. So this piece, the change piece, should always look something like this. Take away this quantity of X, add this quantity of hydrogen ions and conjugate base ions. And then in equilibrium, we simply um, add these two pieces up, our initial and our change. Here, 0.1 minus X. Here, 0 plus X equals X. 0 plus X, X. And I've added the units to emphasize that at equilibrium, these are molarity values we've calculated. Okay? So then we can take these values and work with them in terms of Ka. We can plug all these values into the Ka expression and solve, in this case, for pH. But for pH, we're going to have to have the concentration of hydrogen ions that actually make it in the solution. So here we are. Calculate the pH of that solution. We know here's our Ka value and here's our expression. I skipped something already. So when we set all this up, the important piece to recognize is this. Sorry for messing. When we set up everything into our Ka expression, it should look like this. Ka is equal to x times x over 0.1 minus x. However, um, if we were to try to operate through this, we would find ourselves in a quadratic formula position. And many of you have never touched a quadratic formula, um, and we don't need you to, so we do the following. The 5% rule states that Subtracting any very small value from a number, if that number is less than 5% of this given number, you can omit it and ignore it completely, which turns our operation into this. Notice the x is missing now. For the purposes of this course, once you set up your Ka expression in this terminology, we will always be able to omit that minus x piece. So our expression will always result in Ka is equal to x squared, assuming it was monoprotic, divided by 
just the concentration we began with. Okay, so it'll always end up with something like this. That said, here it is: 1.85 times 10 to the negative fifth is my Ka. Here's my rewritten expression we just spoke of with the the uh, negligible x that we omitted. We multiply both sides by 0.10. And we get the following 1.8 times 10 to the negative 6 is equal to x squared. We take the square root of that value, which yields this hydrogen ion concentration. This x is equal to, pardon me again, always here, this x is equal to, look, my hydrogen ion concentration is x. And because of that, when I take the negative log of it, I get pH 2.87. So you see the process, and though this looks a little laundry listy, it gets quick fast. So let's do another example. Calculate the pH of a 0.25 molar solution of HCN, and there's its Ka. Big hint, if we give you a Ka, it's not strong. HCN, you should know, is not one of our seven strong. So let's write the dissociation. There it is. HCN makes cyanide ion and hydrogen ions. Our Ka expression would be the following. Again, it's products multiplied together, divided by reactant concentration. These are all molarities. And a Rice diagram. And again, in this case, we're starting off with a, with a molarity, and your initial inclination is going to be negative log. No, because not all it forms ions. Some value will form ions. Okay, that same value will produce hydronium ions. I wrote it with hydronium in this case, just so you can see it that way. It's the same thing as hydrogen ions. Don't get thrown off and you'll have equal quantity of cyanide ion. So when I rewrite my um, equilibrium, 0.25 minus x is my value of a molarity of uh, intact acid, and then um, I will have x for my hydronium and, and x for my cyanide ion concentration. So then I can rewrite my Ka expression, and I'm going to do that down here beneath, where I'll have 6.2 times 10 to the negative 10 equal to the cyanide ion concentration, which was x times concentration of hydronium x squared divided by 0 0.25 minus x. And what did we say about this minus x piece for the purposes of this course? We're going to consider it negligible and omit it, which leaves us with this expression. And this x value is equal to my hydrogen ion concentration. And I have hydrogen ion concentration, and I can calculate pH. So let's look at the solution. So there's the rewritten formula I just spoke of. We'll then attempt to solve for x by multiplying both sides by 0.25, which yields this. The square root of that gives us this. The negative log of what our hydrogen ion concentration is gives us a pH of 4.40. Pause if you need to look through that. Finally, percent dissociation is another key idea for this unit, and it's very straightforward. If you compare the actual amount of hydrogen ion or hydronium ion or um, hydroxide ion that's liberated when a weak acid or weak base goes into water, divided by your initial concentration of weak acid or weak base times 100, you have percent dissociation. So, saying that, let's look through this. It's always going to be the concentration of hydrogen ions over the intact acid we began with or in case of base, hydroxide over the intact base concentration. Um, for practice, find the percent of the association of what we had in the last question. This is our concentration we ended with. This is our initial concentration, 0.25. There's our percent dissociation. I should tell you, weak acids, not much of it forms ions. Most of it stays intact. Now, that doesn't mean it doesn't dissolve. They dissolve just fine. But rather than having water solvate them and tear them apart in pieces, it just stays intact as a molecule because water doesn't have the power to pull them apart. Okay. Okay. Let's do a weak base with a percent dissociation. So find the hydroxide ion concentration of a one molar solution of methylamine whose Kb is this value and calculate percent dissociation of that base in this example. There's our reaction. Uh, I put that out just to show you uh, that calculating or sh that showing your um, conjugate acid for a weak base is a matter of adding a hydrogen. Okay, don't let that intimidate you. Even though this is like this strange organic molecule, who knows how this would be drawn? Well, it's not as bad as it looks. 
but essentially your base is the, the proton acceptor. Give it a proton, give it a hydrogen, and that's what happens there. And again, you can imagine this is happening with water. That's where the hydroxide comes from. We split a water molecule. The hydrogen went there, hydroxide was left over. Okay. However, in acid-base dissociation, the weak acid and the base, we don't express water anywhere in Ka, in the Kb or Ka expression, so we ignore it. It's a molecule, it's our helper, it's our friend, but it doesn't participate in the dissociation directly. So, um, we also have a rice diagram. And here's our initial concentration of methylamine, 1.0 molar. We're going to lose some quantity X, so our equi equilibrium expression will be 1.0 minus X for the concentration of meth methylamine. We started with zero hydroxide ion because we started with our base. We add exactly the same quantity of hydroxide as base we had. However much you lose, you will gain in base and in conjugate acid. Okay, and so our equilibrium expression is setting up nicely. Here's our Kb value. There's our Kb expression again, sorry. Um, uh, methylamine ion hydroxide over methylamine. And then we can solve. First, here's our Ka, Kb expression. Kb is equal to x squared, which is hydroxide ion concentration times the conjugate acid divided by the equilibrium of the intact base, methylamine. And so there it is rewritten. I've exercised the 5% rule, no omitted minus x, and it leaves me with x squared is equal to uh, 1.0 in the denominator, equal to 4.3 at 10 to the negative 4. So the square root of my Kb will give me my hydroxide ion concentration in this case, since we had a one molar solution. One times this will give us one. So here's our hydroxide ion concentration. This is what we needed to find percent dissociation, remember. It's going to be this value divided by initial concentration of base times 100 to get to percent dissociation. So 2.110 to the negative 2 divided by 1.0 times 100 gives me 2.1 percent of methylamine forms hydroxide ions in solution. And that's it for um, calculations with weak acids and weak bases. Um, I apologize for the uh, lack of audio in the predecessor to this video. However, I hope this clears anything up you may have had trouble with. If you have questions, please see us. Pages 9 and 10 in the practice packet uh, work directly with this practice. Please give us lots of exercise before we get to the test. Um, if you have any questions, please see Mr. Horn or Mr. Crump in class. Please see us in tutorials. See somebody. Um, we look forward to working with you.